Hi, thanks for joining this Latini talk. My name is Ashley Lee. I'm a content designer at IBM and I work in the Zoe Open Source project. I'm very excited to be here today and present to you about content experience. I hope to share how Zoe Docs evolved over the past few years and some of our experiences. So to start with, what is Zoe? For those who are new to this project, let's make it simple. Zoe is an integrated and extensible open source framework for ZOS. It redefines the way that you interact with ZOS by providing modern interfaces such as Zoe CLI, Web Desktop, REST API management, and VS Code extension. It makes interacting with the mainframe feel like just any modern cloud or desktop platform. Also, Zoe is a vibrant community with participation from various roles and backgrounds. And then, who is our audience who we are helping and writing for? We identified five primary personas of varied skill levels with mainframe. So we will have people who are going to develop on the platform, who are looking to contribute, people who are learning and evaluating the project, and people who are just going to use it or consume it. Understanding what they are looking for in the project helps us write the information they need. And now I want to come back to this topic, why documentation is important, especially for the Zoe project. So first, Open source is not developer only, as many of you already know. People who could not read or write code can also participate, so documentation could be the entry point and is very important for onboarding. And then Zoe as a mainframe project is also targeting for non-mainframers and next generation of developers. So documentation could help lower the barrier of entry and invite contributions. However, good documentation does not equal good content experience. We might have all sorts of content assets available on the doc site or in GitHub repos, but still people could not find them or they are not aware that they exist. So we want to create good content experience and it's all about putting the right content at the right time to the right people on the right place. So how do we do that? We use this journey system to piece documentation together to deliver experience instead of just documentation. It's also a growth path from a potential user to a contributor. Potential users want more fundamental information and learn by doing, while adopters want documentation that could guide them to fulfill job responsibilities and fix issues. Extenders want to know how to build on top of the platform and contributors would like to get involved to make an impact. So we need to create content assets for each user journey phase here to meet the needs and that's what we were doing over the past few years. So now we have all the content available and working, but we keep asking ourselves one question. Do we really know our content users? We thought we know who they are and understand what they need, but do we really, really know? We want to validate. So you may wonder how we validate the experience. We have different channels where people could reach out to us, such as the quarterly community survey, GitHub repo, Slack channels, and NPS. There are two focuses. One is to identify gaps and then identify what users want in their content experience. We gathered a lot of data and feedback. Based on our analysis of all the feedback, we found that our users want better content experience in six key areas. So at a high level, they want an experience that matches their interest. They want checklists and scenario-based installation content to quickly complete the setup. They want more beginner-level documentation, a dark framework with more wanted features. They also want modern content formats as well as easy to find and comprehensive API docs. 
For some of these areas, we are still making improvements. Some have already been reflected in the Zoe Count experience. These kinds of insights help us better shape the Zoe Content strategy. Next, you may want to know what's the experience now. Let's follow one of our personas step to walk through the current Zoe Content experience and see how we enable Deb to grow in the community. So starting from learning about the project, the community website is the best entry point with rich resources such as overview video, a quick tour of components, blogs, events, and even metrics. It's a portal where you could find almost everything you need to learn about the project and its navigation is designed based on interest. Now Deb wants to dive deeper into the technology. She could go to the doc site, which contains a lot more information, such as Zoe architecture, detailed benefits and features. There is also a consolidated list of various learning resources friendly for beginners. Now Deb wants to get some hands-on experience and try it out. There is a free Zoe trial hosted by IBM. It provides four scenarios that help users get started and extend Zoe without installing it. When Deb is more comfortable with the project and feels she has enough information to start working, she could refer to the get started information on the doc site and get preferred formats of docs. The site offers quick start guides and information roadmaps for different components in order to help users arrive at their goals faster. After that, Deb might want to download and install the project. Zoe.org provides the installers, and from there, Deb can go to the doc site and follow a clickable installation roadmap, which tells Deb everything she will need to install and configure. When Deb has a question or encounter an issue, she could self-service by reading the troubleshooting information, which is organized per component for ease of lookup. She could also search within the site, such as search for an error message ID to find existing solutions. If that's not helpful, she can go to the Slack community to post the question and get help from SMEs and other users Rich information and resources are also available for extenders. So Deb could take a look at a list of conformant plugins, start building her own plugin by referring to the developer guide. She could also find reference docs such as Zoe COI reference, SDK reference, and API reference. These are all published online in an easy to digest manner. Deb can also get a conformant badge for her plugin by participating in the conformance program. Okay, so far Deb is happy with the project and she wants to contribute. She could find a contribute section with everything she will need to know. All contributions are welcome, whether it's just an issue reporting a broken link or contribute a plugin to make a bigger impact. So this is Deb's journey with Zoe and Zoe Docs. There are a lot more useful content that Deb could leverage during the process. We also learn from Deb what could be further improved. Okay, we hope more people like Deb and other roles can join us and our community, and everyone is welcome to contribute to Zoe Docs as well. You can check out our guidelines for how, join our Slack channel or squad meeting to introduce yourself. To get involved, you can submit a pull request. There is this edit this page link at the top of each page, which brings you to the source file for editing. Or you can create a doc issue to tell us what's going wrong and how we can make the docs better. Finally, if you want to get involved in Zoe, here's a list of ways you can interact with. Thanks for joining this session and welcome to join our community.